it's yay for yarn and today I'd like to show you how to make this knitted double double layered tablet sleeve that I made on my Addy machine and this will hold what is usually called a seven inch tablet mine actually measures just shy of eight inches by five inches and it's basically a tube it's worked in circular mode and then you add a button and a button loop to keep it closed and this is very thick there is still some room in here because the tablet doesn't fill up the whole space but it, you can't exactly make a tube on the Addy any different size so this works pretty well and I'm going to make it with worsted weight yarn this is worsted weight yarn as well and it's two layers thick so I have some worsted weight yarn here and I'm going to start, make sure I'm in circular knitting mode, and I'm going to start with the first black needle and cast on all the stitches all the way around. Alright, now I'm going to hit my clear button to make my row counter go back to zero, and I'm going to check to make sure that I cast on correctly and didn't make any mistakes. And now I'm going to knit in circular knitting mode for a total of 97 rows. Now in this one, I did not have enough of the self-striping yarn to do the outside and the inside layer. So what I did was for the 97 rows, I did 52 rows of the striped yarn and 48 rows, or no, I'm sorry, 45 rows of the solid. And I wanted it to be more striped than solid so that the stripe would just fold under and it wouldn't be like a funny, weird line where you change color. So then that way it looks like the stripe continues to the inside. I like to turn my Addy sideways for this so that I can crank faster. So I've knit my 97 rows, and you might need to adjust that number a little bit depending on your yarn, but I'm sticking with the 97 rows, and I have a piece of waist yarn. Um, this is not attached to my ball or anything, this is just a scrap. And I'm going to pick up all of the stitches with a piece of waist yarn because we're going to use this to actually close up the bottom of the tablet sleeve. And I actually like to put my tail in the middle so it doesn't get mixed up with all the needles. Okay. So I've picked up all my stitches on a piece of waste yarn and what we're doing here is I have my tube already rolled up a bit. Here's the tube. That is a little tail that got caught. I had um, already made this yarn into something else and then I frogged it so I had to tie some pieces together. So there's little bits of tails sticking out every here every now and then oh there it is all right now if you have tails on the inside it doesn't matter because you're not going to be able to see them anyway so i have my tube here and what we're doing is a little bit similar to what you would do for a hat instead of cinching both ends shut and putting them together i'm just putting the ends together Okay, so I'm taking the one end and putting it inside the other end so that I have the ends of two tubes, just like that. And I am going to be using a crochet hook to slip stitch this together. And you wanna make sure that your tube is not twisted. What I like to do is where I picked up the last 
of my bind off stitches, I like to start in the same place where I did my cast on. So I need to straighten this out a little bit and then I'm going to close this up. All right, so to close up these ends, I have a crochet hook here and I have separated out which tails I used to, which tails are from my waist yarn that I used to um, pick up all the stitches. So this one right here is the yarn that I was knitting with. If you used a different color waist yarn, this will be easier. But the two that I had used to pick up the stitches are out of the way. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do like slip stitching through four layers of live stitches. So I'm going to start over here with this very first live stitch. This is the last stitch that was knitted. I'm going to stick my crochet hook through that stitch and I'm going to be kind of crocheting with this piece of yarn. So then I'm going to pick up the first stitch on the outside layer and then I'm going to find on my cast on tail the last stitch of that layer and then I'm also going to go through the one next to it because we're kind of folding this right here. So I've got one stitch from the front and one stitch from the back of that inside lining piece and then I'm going to pick up the other stitch which would have been on the other side of the outside. So here I've got the first stitch from the outside, the first stitch from the inside, the second stitch from the inside, and the second stitch from the outside. So I'm going to take this stitch and I'm going to actually turn this upside down because that actually goes the right way. I'm going to work a slip stitch through all of those stitches. So now I'm going to tug on my waist yarn a little bit and get my next live stitch from the top outside layer and then I'm going to go down here to the inside and I'm going to pick up the next stitch on the inside layer of the lining, the first layer, the top layer, and I don't want to pick up my waist yarn with it. So then I'm going to get the next layer down here. I'm going to pick up the next stitch that's on the other side of the stitch that I picked up before. So you're pretty much, you have to layer them all up, kind of stack them to get this to work. So then after that, I'm going to come down here and the last stitch on this layer of the outside has already been picked up right there. So I'm going to get the next one. And then I'm going to take my yarn over here. Where'd it go? It's this one. And I'm going to slip stitch through all of those layers. So again, I'm going to take the next stitch to the left of the one I just picked up before on the top layer on the outside. Then I'm going to pick up the next stitch to the left on the top layer of the inside. Then the next stitch to the left from the, top, the bottom layer of the inside. And finally, the next stitch to the left from the bottom layer on the outside. And then I'm going to slip stitch if I can find my yarn. This is what happens when you don't use a contrasting waist yarn. And I'm going to use that again to slip stitch through all those layers. And you want a fairly medium tension slip stitch and you're going to do this all the way across. Okay, so I have slip stitched my four layers together all the way across. And when I did the last couple stitches, I made sure to leave these 
tails, not the tails, but like the strands of yarn that are running through the inside stitches, I pulled that out so I have access to it. And if I can't get it from here, then I can get it from the inside because those loops are still on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is this is my waist yarn that I bound off my stitches with. I'm going to pull this out of all the stitches. This is the one that runs through the stitches that are on the outside layer. And then this is the one from the inside layer. So if I pull it here, it's gonna close it up. So I don't wanna do that. Instead, I wanna pull it from over here and pull the actual tail out of all those stitches. And it's not quite all the way out yet. So I'm gonna reach to the inside, turn it inside out and see if I can find it. And there it is. It's kind of weaving in and out of those stitches. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna leave this tail for in a little bit and I'm going to take this one and then I'm going to tie it off by pulling the tail through the loop that I had on my hook. Okay, and now I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to actually cut this much shorter because I don't need all that extra. And I'm going to just slip this tail in between the two layers of the fabric because there's no way for it to get out. There's two layers around it, so it's just going to sit in between there. And I'm going to just kind of poke the needle out somewhere else. And then I can go back in in the same spot and just keep slipping it in there and get it in between those layers. And I'm gonna do something similar with the inside tail. Now, if you prefer the look of the seam from the inside, then you can totally use this inside out if you want to. But what I'm gonna do is take my tail and do basically the same thing, but first I'm going to tie it off by picking up couple strands of yarn nearby and winding the yarn around the needle and making a little knot. And then I'm going to slip the tail in between the layers again. Alright, and so now you're going to turn it back right side out and you're going to need to find a button that you like that goes with your yarn. Alright, so here's the button that I've picked. This yarn has some black in it and I happen to have a big black button. I like to use the larger button for this. If you don't have a large button, you can use two smaller ones and have like one here and one here to have two loop tabs that close the little sleeve. So I'm going to attach mine right about here in the center, but a little bit further down from the edge. I don't want it right on the edge. I want it maybe about three-fourths of an inch to an inch down and fairly centered. So I have a metal yarn needle here. This button has pretty big holes in it, so this yarn needle will pass through the holes. And I'm going to check first to make sure that it will pass through the holes with the yarn in it. And if it doesn't work for you, then you can use thread or embroidery floss. But this yarn happens to be the closest match I can get right now. So if I stick my yarn needle with the yarn in it through the, the holes of the button, it'll still go through. So that's what I want. I'm going to position my button. And when I'm sewing buttons onto knitted or crocheted items, I like to, instead of making a knot like you would when you're sewing, since the knot won't hold because the uh, openness of the fabric, I like to position my button and then come up through one of the holes and I'm going through the outside layer and through the lining 
And then I like to leave a few inches of tail hanging out. And since this is really thick yarn, I'm only going to stitch through this button a couple of times. And I'm making sure to keep that tail out of the way. Alright, so I've gone through it three times, and that looks pretty secure to me. If you want to go through it again, then go right ahead. But this is a fairly thick worsted weight yarn. So now that I've brought my yarn to the back, what I like to do is take the original tail and tie it together with the yarn that's coming off of my needle and I tie it in a double knot. And then what I'm going to do here is again just slip my yarn tails in between the layers of knitted fabric. Now I will note that your Addy needle that comes with your Addy will not fit through the most of your buttons, but these little yarn or, well, they're not usually called yarn needles, but I get the ones that are called tapestry needles. And they have, the, like, the, the Addy needles have a much wider eye compared to the longer part. And this one is um, a much narrower eye. And that is a little bit harder to get thicker yarns through it, but that does help it to go through tight spaces a little easier. Alright, so now we need a button loop. So I'm going to get some of my leftover yarn and I'm going to attach it back here on the back side, the other side of the sleeve, with my crochet hook. So again, I'm going to make sure I'm in the center, and this I will do actually on the fold, but I want to make sure that I'm centered. So the button is centered, and I want to make sure that I'm getting it where it's, I'm, I'm attaching my loop where it's going to come and be the correct size for my button. So I'm going to, I'm not going to go straight and just like pick up two or three strands of yarn. I want to pick up probably, I don't know, four. You want it to be pretty secure. And I'm going to join my yarn here. And I'm going to probably chain... 10 to start with. And I want to make sure that it will comfortably go around my button. And that's not quite enough. So I'm going to chain a few more. I want it to be secure but not super tight. Alright, so that might be a little bit too many. Alright, so that's the length that I want my chain to be. And that will vary depending on how big your button is and where you placed it. And I'm going to make a slip stitch right where I joined the original yarn. And then I'm going to cut the yarn, tie off, and tie it in a knot again, double knot, with the starting tail because we didn't actually secure that to anything yet. And then I'm going to slip the tails again into, in between the layers of my fabric here. All right, and there you go. Now if you wanted to make this have a different colored lining, you can totally do that. I decided to make mine all one color today. And I hope you try this out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.